I will say, I'm actually having more fun with this trial than I did with, like, the last one we did. Because the last one we did, I was like, oh, it's just too much bullshit. <laughs> I mean, this one's too much bullshit, too, because even, like, the circumstances are still, like, pretty simple compared to the last one. The last one's, like, last one was more of a, like, locked room situation. This one was, like, who stabbed the person? I don't know. <laughs> now then, Lord Von Zykes, how does this prosecution wish to proceed? This trial is rapidly descending into a farce. I know I gave you a deeper voice than what I have right now, but my voice is fucking shot. Like a corked wine, the first few sips are better are bitter enough. <clears throat> Especially if it's dry. You guys really love fire in this courtroom. <laughs> but what follows is so repugnant, it's good for nothing uh nothing save wait what? It's nothing save the gutter. Alright, cool. If I may, Lord Von Zykes, the defense has just put forward a credible alternative explanation for what happened. Credible? Is that your cons- is that your- fuck. Is that your considered ex- opinion- wow, hold up. I can't even say the fucking word now. Is that your considered opinion, Mr. Foreman? The defense argument is a joke to which I barely know how to respond, but let me start by insisting that you must all familiarize yourselves better with the with the relative positions of those place uh, those places being discussed what do you oh you're so right you're so fucking right oh my god cause she would have to throw it at like an angle instead of like directly across the street ooh you're so right but how the fuck did the book in alright what do you mean by that what, what's his angle this time? Well, his angle is that the angle is wrong. Uh, it should already be more than apparent that between the crime scenes and... Okay. It runs a rather wide street. Oh, is it an angle? You know what? Let me actually check myself. I'm sorry. It's been so long since I looked at this fucking map anyways. Oh, no, it's not at an angle. Okay. Yeah, no, it's like right across. All right, cool. For some reason, I thought the accident was like... A little bit further up ahead on the road. <clears throat> Which means that the distance from the Gerdev's house to the scene uh to the scene is some to the scene is some, yes. Fifteen feet? Let me see. Fifteen yards. That's around fourteen meters. Fourteen meters? Oh, that's a little farther than I imagine. And as you as you ladies and gentlemen of the jury rightly noted as having pretentious sign uh pr pr mm. pretentious i can't even say that fucking word significance the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches in other words the smoldering book uh wantonly wantonly yeah wantonly hurled by the lady of the house traveled some 15 yards to land on the opposite side of the road neatly between the collapsed victim's fingers and thumb no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it landed in front of her, and she probably bent over to pick it up, all right? Is that your final conclusion, my learnt and deluded friend? Um. And did the jackknife follow a near-identical projectile? A uh, projectile? Projectory to, the, uh, to plunge into the middle of the victim's back? This fantasy is somewhat stretch, stretching the notion of having a bad day for the victim, I think. Even those pathetic serial uh, serialized detective stories have more believable plots. God, we are dragging this trial. <laughs> There's nothing I can say to that. That that prosecutor loves the sound of his own voice. Mr. Sato. Serialized detective stories are pathetic? Are they? How dare he? Um, maybe let's pick our battles here? My lord, might I be allowed to speak? As judicial assistant, you may speak for the defense. Yes, go ahead. The prosecution may consider the idea a fantasy, but what the defense has po has postulated these fucking words, man, they're gonna be the death of me was believe uh, was believable enough to persuade the jury to change its leaning. And as such, the court has a duty to explore this alternative explanation as thoroughly as possible. 
to that end. Juror number four, Miss Joan Garadeb must be called to testify and submit to the cross-examination. Saints alive! Cross-examination of the juror. Oh my god, I forgot these two were sitting there in the witness stand the whole entire time. They don't even need to be here no more. <laughs> order, order. Well, this is highly irregular. It is unprecedented for a member of the juror to be summoned to the witness stand. Objection. You are just gonna kill somebody one of these days. And unnecessary. Lord Von Zykes, you want to talk about unnecessary? It's like your second bottle you threw into the fucking, into the goddamn gallery today? There are already witnesses in the stand whose testimony, <clears throat> whose testimony the defense may further cross-examine. If my learned friends, uh, fart, farshal, farshal? Fart, mm, is that how you say that? Farshal theory has any truth to it. Then both a burning book and Jackknife must have flown through the sky before the couple's eyes. And we must assume that that they would be able to testify accordingly. Hmm. What say you, witnesses? Yes, sir! Constable Roy Lee beat reporting for duty, sir. I forgot the voice I gave you. Something like that, right? Well, good morning, officer. Yeah, it seems like after all that work I did, he managed to get some sleep. Jesus. Sorry for dozing off until now, sir. I haven't slept for a month on account of the villain who's appeared at my beat, sir. Oh, they're so heroic, these London bobbies. Patricia, my darling, I've been neglecting you, but no more. Oh, Royley, my hero. You make me swoon. Very well. I hereby reject the defense's request. Oh. And order the witness in the stand to testify again. Stay forth before... Stay forth? Yeah, stay forth before the court of any details pertaining to the defense's alternative explanation of events. Yes, sir! Witness testimony. Here we go. <clears throat> Constable Beat Report. This case has nothing to do with Mr. or Mrs. Gavadev. Believe me, a London Bobby is good of his word. You see, sir, the windows on top of the floor of the Gavadev household are top hinge set, uh, top casements. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out of the window, we would have seen it. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help, but my trusty Royley was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. I didn't take my eyes off the crime scene for one moment, sir. Nothing strange to report on the front line. Well, this is quite startling. Top hinge uh, casement windows. That detail was not in the police report, Constable. Ah, oh, yes, I'm sorry about that. I must have uh, been a little drowsy. You cannot excuse your sins with drowsiness every time, Constable. No, sir. Um, sorry, but... What exactly is a top hinge casement window? And you. You cannot excuse your ignorance with such trite remarks, my learned friend. Of course, sorry. I found it, Mr. Nodohodo. That book has everything in it, doesn't it, Sasato? Alright, cast your mind back to the windows in Mr. and Mrs. Gerdev's room. Alright, I'll try. Back in my mind, palace. So the window opens in order to... <clears throat> the window opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. Okay. But, uh, as it's a top hinge casement window, it swings open along the upper edge, you see. Hmm. I'm glad you recertified your ignorance. The casement window most, uh, pro... Prominent, mm, prominent feature is is its stay, a metal bar which prevents the window from being opened beyond a certain amount. To prevent it from being open, this is news to me. Absolutely correct, sir. In other words, if a book or a knife 
would have been thrown through the window, it would fall directly down. It would have clattered against the pane and fall straight down to the pavement below. Yep. Alright. No. You see the problem then? Good. Your education in windows is complete. There was never a possibility of either the book or the knight traveling 15 yards over to the road. That is, unless the window pane has been shattered. Something very discounted already. Something big. Did I even read that right? <laughs> Did you see that, Royley? The young Japanese man just collapsed in agony. Yes, my darling. I saw it. I saw how he crumbled before me. Oh, Royley, you're so strong. How is this happening? I haven't even started to cross-examine yet. And already my argument's been destroyed? Counsel, if you could drag yourself upright again, the court... I don't even know what fucking voice I'm giving him, though. Counsel, if you can drag yourself upright again, the court awaits your cross-examination. Jesus, fuck. My lord. Oh, good. Another desperate situation. <clears throat> cross-examination. Fuck! Alright, let's see. This case has nothing to do with me. Okay. London Bobby is good for his word. The window on top of the floor. Not paying his casements. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out of the window, would have seen it. I did leave the scene. <clears throat> I did leave the scene to go fetch help, but my trusty Royler was there. Yeah? I didn't take my eyes off the crime scene for a moment. Say nothing strange for on that front, sir. Okay. But you say you were a little drowsy. I'm gonna press you on that one. Actually, I should. Mm. No, I'm gonna press you on it. I just. Hold it! I just hate how it like continues going after that, and then Suzato's gonna fucking talk to me for like, for, like another 15 minutes. <laughs> Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. I had my eyes wide open the entire time. Never looked away for a second. Bullshit! Look at you. No one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. I can swear to that on the yard's honor, sir. Yeah, okay. Really? That seems a little strange. Beg your pardon, sir? Strange. Seem altogether regular to me. This burned copy of the Lion of Lion's Pride was originally in the Gar in the Garadep's household. So the question remains, how did it find its way into the hand of the victim? Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were on the scene of the crime the entire time? Aha! Could it be a different copy, sir? Or the one just happened to be burnt as well? Now why the fuck would you buy a burnt book? Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hand? As we can see from the photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulder. Well, sir, that book was in the lady's hand from the moment we arrived at the scene. Is that so? Other than... Wait a minute. There's something about the statement that's not sitting right with me. Too mysteri uh, it's too mysterious that the knife ended up on the back and not... Oh, uh, wait a minute. There must be some common thread between them. Hold up. <clears throat> I never... Damn it. Can I... Fuck. Let me see. Okay. They said I'm I'm mm. Young woman unconscious pavement east side uh style early twenties. Okay, victim remains unconscious, gleaned from personal effects, other details are unknown, apart from a single stab wound, large knife, and then signs of that. Still only seen running away from the poor arms and successfully rest of the other. Okay, wait, hold up. Wait, no. Damn it! Cause I had I had an idea, right? <clears throat> Cause you know, Supposedly, it just finished, like, I'm pretty sure I remember someone saying it just finished snowing, right? And if that's the case, why is the snow around this area just, like, gone, right? Um, and I thought, 
maybe she was originally on the other side of the road and someone dragged her over there, but at the same time, it's like, wait a minute, that's not right, because fucking, it said that, uh, what's-his-face was walking right behind her the whole entire time, you know? Wait a minute. But, hmm. Oh, wait, no. Hold up. Wait, okay. Wait, wait, hold up. Wait, maybe. All right. <clears throat> Stay with me here. Maybe this happened, right? Maybe, um, they had their little spout earlier before, right? The book was thrown out the window, went directly on the ground, melted the snow on the ground. Now, the book was probably there, because let's be honest, if a book was on fire, I don't think anybody would just run up and pick it up, right? Um, so, probably, when they were walking back from the bookstore, the lady probably said, Oh, my, me, a book, look at this, right? And then she picked it up, you know, examined it or whatever, and then right at that moment, maybe the fire was already done, right? But she was still yelling at what's-his-face at, uh, Mr. Garadab, maybe they were still having that dispute, and during that, she threw the knife, right, the knife goes straight down, bam, as she's picking up to, a, uh, you know, picking up to check the book, the knife goes straight down, hits her, right, and since, uh, Natsume says he doesn't remember what route he took, maybe, originally, he was actually on the, on the west side of the street, right, and then, because he panicked, he fucking dipped, right? Wait, no, that doesn't make sense either. Because now, because you have the other two who were there, say, say they were there the whole entire time. So no one would have no fucking chance to, like, drag her body over. Shit. How the hell would it get over there? Huh. And they remember it being on the east side, too, right? They never... Did they ever say it was on the east side? What do you mean? I request the cross-examination of Mr. Garadab without consoling you. Oh, my bad. Mrs. Garadab without consoling you, even if the judge did deny me. Oh, I see. Well, I agree with you. We do need testimony from Mrs. Garadab. You were never going to get the truth from, from this matter? You really think so? Well, I think about it. No matter how far, no matter how far it is across the road, or how the window is open, Mr. Great Ebb's book found its way to the scene of the crime somehow. You're right. And then there was Mrs. Garadab's reaction to me showing her the knife. That woman's hiding something, I'm sure of it. You're right. We need to use cross-examination to cover- Hmm. We'll get to the bottom of this- Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just still trying to think. It's like, he said he was watching the scene the whole entire time. Now, I highly doubt that. He could have dozed off, but at the same time, his wife says she has a good memory. But she also ran off, right? So while he was dozing off, maybe someone could have moved the body somehow. But, you know, I'm not sure if she said that they found the body on the east side of the road, right? If her memory is so good, right? <clears throat> This case has nothing to do with Mr. Gooden. Okay. Hmm. One Bobby is good for his wood. The window's on top floor. Obviously, is anything do uh, anything had been thrown out the window would have seen it. Did leave the scene to go fetch help, but my trusty Royley was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. Hold it! Which side of the road was it that you saw this happen on? Yes, you said that you went to the nearby police box to fetch another officer. That's right, yes. If it had been, uh, if it had been O'Reilly's B, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. You can't be expected to know the location of every police box on, on every beat. So O'Reilly told, uh, told me the way. Only I sort of got a little lost on the way. Trisha, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Terrible sense of direction. Terrible sense of direction. So, did you know if you were on the east side or west side of the street? Oh, please. 
So I suppose I was gone for about 15 minutes. But like I said, my royalty was on the scene the whole entire time, making sure nothing was disturbed. I was off duty at that time, of course, but Drew Bobby is never really off duty. Well, can you add that to your fucking statement? That you were gone for 15 minutes? Delete the scene. Okay. Obviously, anything had been thrown out the window would have seen it. But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already and it was dark. Well, I mean, if it was fiery, then they would see it at night. Oh, but Royal and I were strolling along, gazing at the night sky and looking for a lucky star. Sorry? The star that will guide us to eternal happiness, the North Star? Can it guide you to the answer of the question? <laughs> if a flaming book had cut, had cut across the sky in front of us, it would have lit up like a shooting star, but it didn't go in front of you. It would have went directly down to the ground, yes? And if I had seen a shooting star, I would have had made a wish upon it. Let Roy Lee be an inspector, I would have I would have said, three times at least. Of course, but with the smog and everything, we couldn't actually see the stars. Oh, oh, so was, all right. In short, you're trying to say that neither a book nor a knife across the sky before you. No, 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 no. In short, he's saying there was a bunch of smoke and they couldn't see shit. Yes, sir, that's correct. But you're a nice guy in London and starless. Okay. It certainly seems that they're telling the truth. And then, oh, unless they're talking about the fog, right? If they're talking about the light, leaf, the light fog, then maybe they weren't able to see. That would make sense. And then we saw the poor woman fall on the ground, so she ran straight over to help her. All right. Hmm. Went on the top floor. In case not do it. Okay. Hold it. How can you be so sure of that? You can say that for certain. A very good question, sir. And the answer is this. It has, an, it has a noble founding principles of the force written on it as a reminder of all its policemen sworn duty. Can you give that to me? Can I see that? <laughs> he showed it he showed it to us before, didn't he? Did he? I can't really say I remember. To patrol the streets of London down and uphold the peace of the common man. Is the job, that's what the job's all about. That's why I stand here today beside my long-suffering wife and telling you a Bobby's good for his word. While, while rubbing my tired eyes immediately. Oh, Royley, you're so manly. Of course I am. <laughs> These guys are too fucking much for me. Jesus. No, none of this is what I meant. I mean, how can you say for certain that the case has nothing to do with them? I see. I should have said so earlier. Said what? Yes, well. So, could you answer the question? That was a waste of time. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. I will stay. I will answer it to the fullest of my abilities. The surprising reason why Mr. and Mrs. Garadad's dis uh, domestic dispute can't be related to the case. But before I get to that, just one thing. Yes? I'd very much like you and all your countrymen to understand that great British intuition of Scotland Yard. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London bobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here. So, to that end, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for you. Thank you! But I must warn you, you won't be able to get through- uh, you won't be, uh, You won't be able to get through it without shedding a few tears. Thank you, thank you very much. Alright, let me see this shit. Thanks for sealing your fucking demise, bitch. Alright. What we got? Okay, item one, a policeman will strive to preserve the peace within his allotted beat. Item two, a patrolling officer is expected to walk 20 miles around his beat every day for the further... <clears throat> for the further hints of the community relations. Item number one, crimes uh, fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. What? Any crime falls under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. Okay, yeah, okay, that, all right. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Hmm. 
Okay. Hmm. You see the window on top of the floor. The case has nothing to do with them. Believe me. I'll just go for a squirt. Obviously, he didn't throw out the window. I'm sorry, did I press this one? See, so the window. Yeah, I didn't press this one. Let me see. Hold it. Might as well press everything, right? By which you mean they don't fully. Uh, they don't open fully, is that correct? Yes, sir. They're just there to allow a bit of air through the house, you see? So they're restricted as, uh, as to how much they open. And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from the inside of the room would simply strike the pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Oh, go ahead, please, please, be my honor, go ahead, dickhead. Here's the location where objects would have fallen. Hmm, yes. Directly opposite of the scene of the crime. On the other side, uh, the other side of rather wide road. Has it been so hard for someone to mention this top hinge uh, casement thing before? Well, I have another question for you, Constable. And what would that be, sir? How do you even know? Why would you have any idea of what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Garadab's house is furnished with? Ah, well, sir, that's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation already. Hey, you wanna add something there, lady? Excuse me. Excuse me. Hold up. You got something you wanna add? <laughs> I really love how he just he's like, you got something you wanna sorry, you wanna speak up? Hmm? Sorry. You look, well, delighted. Is there any particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering that, and that's all. We really were so lucky. Lucky? What do you mean by that? Well, of course I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just so lucky that it didn't happen to Roy Lee, it didn't happen on Royley's beat. It was so close, you see. Someone fucked up. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh yes, that street, Briar Road. That's the boundary between Royley's B and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? Constable B, wake the fuck up, man. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's the reason I was helping with the interview, uh, with interviewing the occupants of the Garadub household yesterday. Their, their house is on my beat, you see. Hmm. That really is cutting it close, then. Wait, so their house is on your beat, but the fuck? Wait, wh what? Uh, huh? Wait. Their house is on your beat, but the murder isn't on your beat? But they're right. D wh where does the line stop? Constable, I wonder if you could clarify something. If the Garretub household is on your beat, does that mean that the pavement next to it as well? Outside Mr. Garretub's house? Yes, ma'am. The pavement on the side of the road is part of my beat. I see. I was unaware of that. Just think, if the woman had been attacked just on the other side of the Briar Road, we would have been able- uh, we wouldn't have- uh, fuck. We would never be able to go for the meal to celebrate our wedding anniversary. But, that's the li- that's the life of the Bobby, after all. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright, Patricia. Okay. Are you- Hmm. Hmm. Just, yeah, you know, just, hmm. Oh, hmm. You sure you didn't move the body? Just, you know, you sure? Oh no, our reservation. Oh, let some other motherfucker handle this. Just move the body. Extraordinary people. Our Bobby's tirelessly working the benefit of of all Londoners. Did you know, uh, do you know what I think? I think it was the good Lord's way of rewarding my royalty for his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? That must be it, Pat, my love. 
That must be it. I think perhaps we should make sure we have that information officially recorded. Leave it to me, Mr. Narahoda. I'll take care of it immediately. Okay. And now it's my turn, I think. For what? Um, can I ask you something? Please, Mr. Lawyer, sir? I don't trust you two motherfuckers anymore. <laughs> I mean, I didn't trust you to begin with, but I definitely don't trust you now. Yes, of course. What is it? You're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell. What? I, I, was, I wasn't really. I mean, what is she doing? Please? Just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make... Wow, all right. We doing that? <laughs> You might just see me you might just see me as a wife of policeman, but I'm a woman of my word. I, I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses, I don't want to hear it. My voice will be heard! My lord, you let me speak, won't you? Yes, Miss Beat. I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you desire. Sometimes the path of least resilient is the sage one. That was a very loud murder. A mutter, my bad. I heard that. The Japanese man thinks a policeman's wife's word counts for nothing, does he? Well, watch out, sir. I might let you get away with something like that, but my Riley won't. Duly noted, Miss Beat. Please, I humbly ask you continue. What could she possibly be about? Uh, what could she po What could she possibly be about to say? Okay, that's a weird, weird way of saying that. Be about to say. That, no, there's no way I didn't read that right. I'm sorry. What could she possibly be about to say? Oh, no, no, she, yep, that's how it was said. All right, no, no. <laughs> okay. You know what I saw? My eyes never let me down. My sense of direction is a little off sometimes. So was it. So was it on the fucking. Hmm. Made a lot of progress here. Jesus. I well, I say a lot of progress, but I feel like I haven't made jack shit to be honest. Alright. What's the other one? I didn't take my eyes off the crime scene for a moment. Nothing strange before okay, yeah, okay. Alright, so go ahead, lay it on me. Hold it! Miss B, nobody's questioning that uh what you told us. I saw it, I did. That evening, I saw it clearly. The little eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curved and the funny curved back sl uh, sl slinking away from the scene. Haha, <laughs> nice. And I know that I didn't uh, that I didn't see it. Wait, what? And I know what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying through the sky. All very clear. You you almost mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. Oh, yeah, well, that's a little, embar a little embarrassing, really. I always end up at the wrong places when I made arrangements to meet Royally. He never... Hello? Excuse me. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna say something? Constable Beat? Is there a problem? Okay, wait. Maybe she didn't move the body. But maybe you did, Royally. Maybe she went, oh no, it's not on your beat. Uh, we gotta go get, we gotta go, uh, you know, get the fucking other person. And he went, okay, my love, go and do it. Because that's definitely not my beat. And then as she ran away, he went, I'm just gonna move this body over here. Thank you very much. So I don't have to deal with this bullshit right now. I am tired. <laughs> eh, what? Uh. Oh, sir, uh, no problem, sir. Did your wife remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? I'm telling you, someone had to have moved that fucking body. Well, in a way, sir, yes. I I just remembered uh, that the same thing happened that evening, is all. Huh? You mean, Miss Beat lost her way on the night of the incident? Well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box and the next beat over from mine. But she was gone for a fair bit than what I was expecting. I thought she'd be back in 10 minutes, but my darling was gone for a good 15. 
Oh, Riley, you're so you're such a tease. Please, please, get a fucking room. But the reason I was so long was because of the bouquet, because of the banquet, silly. The banquet. Sorry, what banquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Riley's so romantic. He saved up for it with his feather, with his far farthings. Far what? Okay, farthings and halfpennies. Happened. Okay, he found in the gutter while doing his rounds. Yes, how romantic. I forgot all about all that until just now. Had you, my darling? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was just between us. Not talking about it to everyone else, darling. You have to promise. Really? Oh. What was that about? Constable B looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid I can't offer any useful insight, Mr. Narahodo. <clears throat> but I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Mrs. Beat about that banquet. Uh, banquet? Okay. Big fuck. I want to say. Damn it. I want to say banquet. Words bouquet. Right? Is that it? I forgot which one is which. Hmm. <laughs> Miss uh, Mrs. B, the no, it's bouquet. Yeah, no, that one's bouquet. Banquet is like what T E I or some bullshit, something like that. They're both spelt fucking weird. Uh, the bouquet you just mentioned. I like you to add details. I like you. Uh, fuck. I like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh really? Yes, I love to. Love about it's like just sitting here. He's like, oh, I'm tired of this shit. What happened was I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing my way for a while. Alright, well then talk about it. God damn it. You mean you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. Oh, I was a little upset. When we ran over and saw it was a woman with a knife uh, when we ran over and saw it was a woman with a knife in her back. I was so shocked I dropped the bouquet Royally gave me. It was in a dark spot where the street lights were, casting any um <coughs> sorry. It was in a dark spot where the street lights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then you went to the police box to report it to the policeman whose beat it was on? Yes. And I came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see? That's when I spotted my bouquet again, but the funny thing was, when I picked it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. SOMEONE FUCKING MOVED IT! YEAH! In case you need reminding, Miss Beat, the victim is not deceased. I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice calling me from the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably. That's right, silly me. I've gone over to the wrong side of the street. Although, I'm going to blame the bouquet this time. I think, uh, I can't think what that, okay, wait, hold up. I'm sorry, I just got up. What? You dropped it on the scene, yes, that was right, when we ran over and saw a woman with a knife in her back. Okay. I was so shocked, I dropped the bouquet you gave me. It was in a dark spot where the lights went. Okay. Hmm. And then when you went to the police. Wait. <clears throat> and then you went to the police box. Yeah, okay, wait, 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 I'm sorry. It was in a dark spot. But the street lights weren't casting any lights, so I didn't notice at first. Gotcha. Then when I spotted it again, I spotted it again, but the funny thing was I went up to pick it up, and it was nowhere near the victim's body. Okay. So the body was definitely moved. Um, I was on the right track with that. But from... Alright. Alright. Yeah, no, all right, yeah, okay. Whatever. <laughs> Although, I'm gonna blame the bouquet this time. Yeah, yeah. The bouquet somehow moved from one side of Briar Road to the opposite side. So, I was fucking, I was, I was right. I was right. They said they saw no fire. Yeah. So that means the book must have already been there. She probably looked down, pick up the book or whatever, 
In that moment, knife went flying out the window, right? Maybe it might not have been related to the little fight that they had or whatever. Knife went flying to the window. Bam, right? They saw the woman collapse. Uh, Natsume saw the woman collapse and he went, holy fuck, dropped his shit and ran, right? And then, uh, fucking, what's his face? Uh, what's his name? Royley's all like, my love, Patricia, you must go and report the other beat because you're dumb and stupid and you, <laughs> she's not stupid, but you're stupid with directions and you don't know what the fuck, uh, what side of the road is on, right? So I can trick you with that shit. It's not on my beat. Go get the other guy. I'll stay here and keep watch. And she's like, yes, my love, you're so brave. I'll go do it. And then him knowing she would get lost, right? He's like, perfect time to just move this shit over to the other side <laughs> so when she comes back i'd be like oh patricia thanks for getting the help the body was there the whole time ah. isn't it but the worst uh, but the worst of it is i forgot to pick the bouquet up again when i left the scene that beautiful rose Raleigh brought me with the <clears throat> with that change from the with that change from the gutter spent so long collecting By the bouquet, do you perhaps mean this sorry solitary rose? Oh! Oh yes, that's it. That's the bouquet Royley brought for me on our anniversary with old bits of change he found in the gather. Maybe just call it a rose? Tell us, Lord Von Zykes, where did you come by that flower? According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene's investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Gerdeb's household. The body was moved! I was so fucking right! In front of the Gerdeb's house. I love it when I'm right! <laughs> Can anyone, anybody want to go back to fucking Danganronpa of V3 where like at the halfway point of the game I go, wait a minute, so is this what it is? And everyone goes, no, you're wrong. And then we get to the end and I'm like, I guessed the whole entire game. I guessed it already. I fucking win. <laughs> Although it wasn't noticed until the morning as it laid there in the street blank that cast no lights. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case since it was found on the opposite side of the, uh, side of the, side of the thoroughfare. Thoroughfare, thoroughfare, whatever. But thank you, sir. Thank you. Can I have it back now, please? No, the fuck you may not. Evidence it goes. No, I think for good measure the rose should be added to the court's records. Oh. Haha. <laughs> it's my rose now. But it's a symbol of our love. I want it back after the trial, do you hear me? I want it back. Good grief. Rest assured that I shall do my very best not to forget Miss B. Alrighty then. Didn't take you. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. You didn't take your eye off for a moment, buddy. You sure about that? Okay. Got your number, motherfucker. Yeah! I was so right about it, and I'm so happy that I'm so right about it. This shit has been solved by me. Objection. You liar. You claim Constable B. There was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene. But that cannot be. Oh, wake your ass up. What? What do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Miss Beat, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to the Beat, the bank rate you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection. Yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of the of the mer, of the of the mirror mirror mag marat um, whatever of the banquet, it's a single sorry blo bloom that can be described. No doubt it was blown in the in, damn it. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street back into the gutter where it belongs. Man, I don't even know how to say that word. That honestly, that's the first time I ever saw that word in my life. Objection. But. If, there, if that was the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to that fact? Uh, 
No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. Hanswell Veet swore that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the banquet belonged to banquet. I dare I go say it again. But the bouquet belonged to me. It was nothing to do with the case. That that's why Raleigh didn't mention it, I'm sure. No, because sadly it's not only your bouquet that was that was taken there. That we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously on the wrong fuck, I can't even read anymore. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way around. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about, Willis. Think about it. Besides Mr. Beats, uh, besides Mrs. B's bouquet, there's Mr. Gerdep's book. Mr. Gerdep's copy of The Lion's Pride, which was thrown out of the window by his wife, would have struck the pain, <clears throat> would have struck the pain of this on the uh, fuck, would have struck the pain of the casement window and landed here on the west side of the street, creating what some may call a West Side Story. <laughs> and yet, it was actually it was actually found here, on the opposite side of the road, in the victim's hand. That's pretty crazy. Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Beat Bouquet, shouldn't it have been dropped over here at the scene of the crime on the east side? But in fact, that motherfucker's from the west side. That's crazy, right? <laughs> There's no logical explanation for those things. Unless somebody deliberately moved them. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. What are you trying to say? What are you talking about? Sounds like you think Roy Lee did something wrong. Oh, he did. Don't you listen to a word that scrawny lawyer says. Oh, now you awake? Wittering, uh, wittering on about books and banquets. Bank, fuck, bank. I keep saying banquets. Wittering about books and bouquets. Why should we care? It's nitpicking. That's what it is. Oh, good. Miss Garadab's coming around. That's great. You might call it nitpicking, Miss Garadab. I really hope I'm saying their names right. I don't care if I, I am though. But deliber uh, but fuck. But deliberately meddling with the scene of the crime is a criminal offense. It's called. Uh, Tampering, Mr. Natahoto. But the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit to it. For a very subtle but compelling reason. Because this man wanted to get a snack on with his girl. Objection! That's what we're talking about right now, right? Tampering? You barely heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend. Who would possibly have had cause to call... Who probably have had cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there's someone who tampered with the scene of the crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to the one particular person. Counsel, I must demand that you uh, that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? Oh yeah, I fucking called it. Ha! Take that! Obviously. There's only one person that could have done it. Constable Royally Beat, it was you. What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? Nonsense! Why would my Royally do something like that? There's no, uh, there's no one straighter than my husband. No Bobby works more tirelessly for the police of London. For the people, for police of London, people of London. Miss Beat. You said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up. It's, it's all nonsense. It's all lies. What about the what about that Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was it was him. He did it. If that was true, Cosmo B would have seen him do it. Oh. And forgive me for pointing this out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Mr. Beat, uh, Mrs. Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Well? Objection! First you make accusations about the landlord and his wife, and now you incriminate a policeman as well? But your accusations lack one very important thing. Oh, what is it? You claim you claim the criminal uh, the criminal. You claim the I can't read no more. You claim the crime scene was tampered with. 
but there's only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime to hide something. That's right, he's right. But my husband and I just happened to be there, that's all. So why would we have anything to hide? It doesn't make any sense. You, off you offer no motive for this alleged tampering. Oh, I got you. Don't worry. I got you. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Yeah, okay. You're okay, buddy. We'll see about that. Constable V had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the crime scene. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Narahodo, have you? Have you managed to solve- Oh, honey! I solved this shit, like, hours ago! Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London's police officer. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out your reputation as a lawyer will be in, in fuck, ir, irrevo, mm, I can't say the word, damn. With that stark warning in mind, I will now explain to the court the mo, uh, well, you will now explain to the court <laughs> the motive for this alleged tampering. All right, let me just save it just in case I fuck up somehow like an idiot, like a complete moron. I haven't, I haven't done that, you know, I haven't done that in a while. Yes, my lord. I got you. I got this. You ready? <clears throat> Constable Beat's motives for tampering with the crime scene was to hide where the victim fell. Where the victim fell to the ground. That's what the Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Royal Road, we saw it happen, remember? It was right here, as if so as if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly what everybody has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stamped at all. What? Oh I got this. Oh I got this. Hold up. I got this. Beginning to wonder where this where this tum um tumul tumulacious what the fuck tumulation tumulation what the hell is that word all right whatever where this trial will end counsel oh it's gonna end here with me right now if that's your assertion then the court is dying to know my knee bunny's friend oh don't worry I got you my English friend where are you proposing that the crime actually took place oh I'm gonna tell you it took place. Right here. Take that! But, but that's on the opposite side of the road. I, I don't understand. Oh, you're about to. On the evening in question, Mr. Garadev's book fell directly down from the open window above. In your bait, I keep saying bait. In your bouquet, Miss Beat, never moved at at all. What did move was the scene of the crime itself. Good, good gracious. Everybody shut up. Objection. Everybody shut up, I got this. Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. Oh, they did, trust me. That's right, I saw it with my own eyes. It was five o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was the typical London fog on the ground. When you saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim's aid, that was actually on the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true. It, it couldn't. It can't have been. Constable Beat then arranged for you to be absent while, uh, well, shit, I can't read. To be absent for a while by spinning, by spinning, by sending you for help. And during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things, all the things shown in this print, the victim, herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the east side of the road. Extraordinary. But the Cosmo overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? The, the bouquet, I presume. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the rose bouquet. Lord Von Zyke said, 
it was nothing it was noticed until mm, shit. it wasn't noticed until the morning as it laid there the street lamps cast no light yes it couldn't could have been dark it could have been seen in the dark obviously which is why it was the which is why fuck which is why it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of the road. And that is the defense theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Royal... Royal... Fuck. <laughs> Constable Royally B? Um, well... I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? Oh, Royley. It isn't true, is it? What the lawyer said, it's all lies, isn't it? I know it is, because you're the most upstanding righteous man I know. I had a dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Everything. Come out. Everything. Exposed. Only it seems... It wasn't a dream at all. Good. Good golly. Man. Order, order, I say. What on earth is the meaning of this? Oh, Royley, why? Why would you do something like this? Moving a corpse is... It's a criminal offense, isn't it? Wishing the victim dead should be one, too. Constable... <laughs> Jesus. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. I... I can't say, sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all this. For, dam for damaging the Yard's reputation. For everything. I have a possible explanation. For why only the particular- mm, For why only that peculiar evening? Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of Scotland Yard's policeman. And yet, Lord Von Zykes, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. But remember, it's just a game theory. <laughs> Counsel, for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. Oh, don't worry, I got you, my lord. Or should I say, my man, my guy, my dude. England, Japan, it makes no difference where you come from, human emotions are the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. What gives away the motive for Constable Beat's unthinkable actions? I figured this shit out! I fucking called it! I've realized that I'm a foreigner in this land and I have only just arrived from Japan. Which is why all this information about London's so-called Bobbies is completely new to me. I've learned that through honorable patrolling, uh, though honorably patrolling, the beat is the most demand- fuck. Let me try that again. <laughs> I learned that, uh, though honorably, Patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. For example, keeping the peace, looking after the citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh, yes. It was our very first wedding anniversary. Constable Beat had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife. He was looking forward to taking her out for a, cele for a celebratory meal. 
when he and Miss Beat stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. When he saw the shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them, what must have gone through the man's mind? But sir, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Miss B puts up with, with a lot being married to a Bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. This is the warrant card that Constable B offered to Lim, uh, offered to Lemmy earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says, "When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigation and help detectives." <laughs> Constable B, is that, or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundaries of your beat. Oh. Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious. Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you have done? It was the first time since I became a copper that I ever cursed God. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal should still be lurking somewhere. As we ran over to the scene, I had already I had every intention of doing my duties as a police officer. We got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. When the crime is discovered and is beat, uh, crime discovered on his beat, the policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Why here? Why did this have to happen here? And why tonight, of all nights? Why? It's a copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so I told Pat I should. I told <laughs> Pat she had to go to the nearest police box. I'm gonna stop doing the voice. <laughs> My throat is killing me. I told Pat she had to go to the nearest police box and fetch whatever was on uh, whoever was on duty there. It was then when I opened my mouth to speak. It just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my whole out of my own mouth. This is the next beat. This um this is the next beat to mine, Pat. So you'll have to go to the police box that covers it. Turn right along whatever fucking street it's called, and then I fucking called it. Oh man. I'm I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, constable. I just wanted just that one night to take my Patricia for out for dinner. Oh, Royley. Just that one night. You knew that if you knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street, to the east pavement of Royer Road, which fell under the neighboring beat scale. You see? I thought, well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon? Oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my Rolly would never have left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. 
Ah, I see your meaning now. But God got me back for my sins, didn't he? That's why. That's why I missed the rose I brought for Pat. Oh no, Royally, that was all my fault. I should never have dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Royally. And can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from one side of the road to the other? Oh, um... Four it was. Yes, sir, definitely. Four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsume in the fourth. Belonging to the one that fell out the window upstairs in the Garadep's household, of course. But... What made you place the book in the victim's hands? When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well... Because that's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You sure it was this book, the lion's pride, that was that the victim was holding? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. Okay. I mean, that still doesn't change my theory. The book fell, right? She saw it, went, oh, look at this. Bent over. Then the knife, whoosh, bing, pow. Right, got her. And everything else played out from there. I thought it was an open and shut case at this time, you see. There was only the two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happened. However, uh, however, which way you look at it, it had to be the fellow who ran- Oh, damn it. Mm, I just realized. In my mind, I'm like, it's done, it's over, we're done with this. But we still have to explain why the, why the knife is chipped, right? <laughs> Whatever. However, which way you look at it? Had to be the fellow who ran off who'd done it, I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. I didn't think moving it... I didn't think moving all over the road would make a lot of difference. I suppose this is... Uh, this is it for me now. If I had it. My lord. Yes, Lord Von Zykes. I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witness. Constable, may withdraw. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Prosecutor, sir. What will become of my royally? What will happen to him? For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Please don't punish my husband. This was all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late. Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. All right then, my love. One last thing, Constable. Hmm? Let this be a lesson learned to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters. However insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Bert, carve that lesson into your mind. And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Uh, never again, sir. You mean to say... Leave. Now. This trial's not yet over. Oh. Aww. Von Zykes does have a heart. Well, quite a startling revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party translating the entire scene of the crime like that? I fucking did. Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there's some immutable facts here. That the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume, is the only person who could have possibly committed this crime. Objection. Oh, get the fuck out of here with that, man. No, I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the true scene of the incident, there's something else. Another person who could have been responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Forgive me for being presumptuous. 
but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of the possibility already. Lord Von Zykes, is this true? Very well. Name the person you will find and if further investigation is warranted. The prosecution has no objections to the trial continuing. You will name this other person. Oh, yeah, of course, definitely. Yeah, no, get your ass on the stand. Get over here. <laughs> the defense will once again like to request the cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again. My assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth of this case, it's imperative that we cross-examine juror number four, Miss Joan Garadet. But me? Oh, Terry. Don't you object, dickhead. The request has already been denied. No, 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 no. The situation is very different now. Miss Garadeb, answer me this. What do you want now, you little toad? Oh, Jesus. At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Garadeb. And... <coughs> In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited, and to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looked over Briar Road. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane uh, on the open hinge set of casement, the open end casement window, the book plummeted directly down, finding its way to what we know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and I said, yes, as I said, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you once more, Miss Garadab. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back. Have you really never laid eyes on it before? Don't you fucking pass out on me. I don't recall it. Fucking liar. Seriously? Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? And anyways, the man over there in all the regalia said members of the jury needed to testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. Objection. No. I have no recollection of saying that at all, juror number four. Oh. Make no mistake. You jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial pro process. Get your ass down here. If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. But, but that's just common, or uh, that's just a common or garden knife. It could have come from anywhere. We have several ones like it at home. If, if one went missing, how would you expect me to know? What, what's that? You're the fucking maid. Of course you should know. Are you joking? What are you saying? Please, Miss Garadet. Now you listen to me? I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that I just injured someone. Do you hear me? I couldn't bear it. Oh, that poor woman. So, yes, I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence in your case. In, mm, damn it. Hard evidence if you're going to insist on this being my fault. Oh, don't worry, I got your back, girl. I got your fucking evidence. I got your evidence. Don't worry, I got your fucking evidence right here. We're going to have to prove to me that I threw the knife, if that's what you're thinking. Okay. Come along now. Chop, chop. Do your worst. All right, all right, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, okay. Well, Mr. Nadahoto, if I have, <clears throat> if I had evidence like that, believe me, I would throw it at her already. Then take to the stand, juror. Oh. The prosecution does not object to the defense request to cross-examination, uh, cross-examination, to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Von Zykes. I, I'm gonna have to testify. Juror number four, as I'm sure you will appreciate having observed with your own eyes today. Witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths 
of being unearthed. Truths of which the witness themselves may not even have been aware. Oh dearie me. So, I demand your full and, unadulter and unadulterated testimony, Miss Gerdup. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsel? Certainly, my lord. Oh, um... That's what I'm hoping for, my lord. Get your ass on the stand! This is such a strange feeling. For the first time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. I'm here, in the Old Bailey, and I'm a lawyer. Witness, state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes. My name is Joan Garadeb, and I am, well, I'm a juror, and such like. It sounds like she even, it sounds like even she doesn't know if she's a housewife or a maid or what anymore. The court has decided your testimony is required in order to clarify matters in this case. Do you understand, madam? Y yes, my lord. You will tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. And I warn you, do not attempt to hide these truths. Oh, oh dearie me. Chin up, Johnny. <laughs> Nothing to worry about now. It's Mac tonight! <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were here, John. Ah. Uh, wasn't only you in the room that day, old thing, was it? Rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? But, but what about your knee, dear? Don't you worry about that. Hardly notice it. I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. Oh, John. I presume you are Mr. John Garadev? Yes, sir. Former second lieutenant of the third regiment of the fourth new... Fourth, what? North numbered, wow, why is it all together? Uh, nor Northumber, fuck, Northumberland, fear, I cannot say any of that shit. See my fair share of action, and now, living the quiet life as it were. The quiet life. <laughs> were you not, were you not exaggerating in an instant, oh, exaggerating. Were you not engaged in an incendiary battle with your spouse on the day in question? Uh, well, yes, <laughs> quite. I believe this may represent a first in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. However, the court will hear your testimony now, juror number four, and that of your husband. You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your home at the time of the incident in question. Sir, at once. Guys, please don't me. Please don't drag this. This this whole trial has gone on for four and a half hours. I would like to take a break. <laughs> I would like to take a small little break. Right. Yes, on the day that you're referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. Knocked a candle over and set a fire to the carpet. Soon headed uh, soon headed out. The uh, so headed out though, and got the car, got the window open. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find at the item. Plenty of knives around our place. Can't say I've noticed one or two went missing. I'm afraid. But that bolly thing, that bolly thing in the victim's back really was one of ours. We have a job proving it, I think. All right. Hmm. Sounds as though it was quite the battlefield in your household that evening. Although, an entirely one-sided assault, it seems. The enemy caught us on... <laughs> the, enemy, uh, the enemy caught us on the hop, sir. Had no choice but to dig in and take defensive me measures. To be honest, the enemy had kept chilling us for another... Chilling us for another minute, we would have been toast. Of course, a veteran such as myself. 
is only too aware that on a battlefield, you're just a you're just a gnat's whisker from death at any moment. Are you still talking about a marital quarrel here? Well, I must say, I'm I'm dubious that I'm dubious. What? I must say that I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus narrows such that surroundings are barely noticeable. These witnesses may not have been able to offer anything more than that uh, than what they testified already. This may be a dead end. Von Dykes may as well be right. Well, whatever the chances, we only have this last cross-examination to uncover the truth. Yes, I'm afraid so. Very well, counsel. Begin your cross-examination. So this is the last one, huh? All right. <clears throat> Woo! Please don't, please don't drag this one out. All right, the last cross examination. I got this. On the day return, uh, referring to had a bit of a skirmish. Not candlestick over, so the fire out of cover. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, I picked up whatever I could find. Throw it. Even though the room was on fire. As far as I was concerned at the time, it was more important to extinguish my anger than the flames. When a woman wants to throw, she must throw. That is most certain. Stop looking at me, Makoto, but I don't trust you. How did she know I was thinking that? So, please cast your mind back and try to remember. Was the knife amongst the items that you threw at your husband that day? In all honesty, I do not recall. But I feel I must point out that I'm no I'm no monster. Let me see. Some bread, a cabbage, garlic, a towel, and a sponge, a napkin. Whoa, you got something to add to that? You wanna you wanna you wanna speak up? Do you have something you wanna add, sir? Mr. Garadet. Don't, don't shoot! I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. Did your wife remark just now bring something to mind? Nothing of the nothing of significance, no. Just that the barrage of projectiles the old thing launched in my direction was somewhat more solid than she implied. Books, bricks, and the fire poker. I seem to recall. Oh, the fire poker. And oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Good grief, woman! We're not at home now. This is the court of law. Oh dearie me! Ever so sorry, dear. What's she trying to do with the teapot? Honestly, John, I would never have thrown such things at you. Obviously. Well, take a look at this then. How do you suppose this happened? Your pipe, sir. Had this thing in my hand as usual at oh, wait, my bad. I'm sorry, fucked that up. Had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of her soft projectiles. She did, sir. And now, and and when I went to pick up the thing, it was broken in two. I like to see a sponge do that sort of damage. That's a lot of damage. I see your pipe was broken. It would have never been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Anyways, I managed to banish the thing up for now. <laughs> you are one to exaggerate, aren't you, dear? Hmm. I wonder what we should what we should make of this account. Now nah, it's important. Record that shit. The defense believes Mr. Garadad's remarks just now to be of great significance. Shut the fuck. Come on, man. This war veteran's word only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife and pipes, <laughs> as well as heart, may be broken. Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worth adding to the f formal testimony. Indeed, common sense, one might say. <sighs> might want. Might, uh, fucking, might want? In that case... Would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? 
Hmm? Well, yes, I, I don't see why not. Oh, dearie me. Here you go again, trying to... And to a, a, and, and grad, and graduate, and, and grad, mm, I don't know that word, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know that word. I probably do, but it's, but you know, it's been five hours at this point. <laughs> um, there you go, trying to inaugurate whatever the fuck word is, yourself with a young lady. Very well, the court will accept the gentleman's pipe as evidence. The pipe has been entered into the court record. I hope I didn't speak out of turn, Mr. Naruto. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I was just feeling rather disappointed for you after your request was turned down. Oh, no, it's fine. Thanks to Sasato san we have some new evidence to work with. Thank you! Well, thank you for that, rebuttal, Mr. Garadab. Now, if you could return to the crux of the matter. What can you tell the court about the knife used? All right, there we go. I would like... To examine the pipe, please. I don't know how I'm able to examine the pipe if he's smoking it, but yeah. Ooh, got a little chip mark here. Okay. There's a small nick out of the bowl here. Look, it appears to have been made relatively recently. You see how there's little scrapes and dents all over it? It's clearly a well-loved pipe. Yes, you're right. Seems seems to me recently. Uh, that oh shit. Mm. Collect my thoughts, please. It seems to me recently that being well-loved goes hand-in-hand -hand with getting some battle scars. This peculiar neck is catching my eyes, though. Because it's clearly new. Hmm. Alright. Plenty of knives around a place. Can't say notice what missing, I'm afraid. Alright. The bloody thing in the victim's back really was one of ours. You have job proving it. Oh, don't worry. I can prove it. I think. I think, maybe. Maybe I can prove it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> well, I know, I know I can prove it. Definitely. But I just don't know which statement to use it on. Pick up whatever I can find to throw at him. Candlesticks over, blah blah blah. Yes, on the day for to and wife and I had a bit of skirmish. Okay. Hmm. Can't say if I noticed one or two went missing, I'm afraid. It might be this statement, but I'm gonna try I'm gonna try doing this one first. I mean I only made one mistake thus far during this whole entire trial, so. I'm gonna throw the pipe at him. Objection. There's clearly something to add. Okay, I yeah, know, definitely I fucked up. Clearly something out of here. Your behavior, Council. Okay. I've been saving up. I've been saving all my fuck ups for this part, <laughs> so now I can get them out of the way. I won't lower my hand until I prove my client's innocent. <laughs> Jesus. All right. All right. Now I'm gonna try using it on this. Objection. Let's just consider the implications of that statement for a moment, shall we? Hmm. What implications? Alright, so maybe it's not the pipe that we use. But it's the knife itself. Because I don't think I need to press anything anymore. Let me just make sure to examine the knife once more. Since we now have the uh, pipe in our possession. Oh, look here, Mr. Naruto, just a tip. Here's me missing, you're right. Wonder what could have happened to it. Yes, you don't think? Could have been lodged in the victim. Oh dear, I hope not. Seems painful. I'm still surprised that the knife doesn't have any blood on it, but okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. Well, then I'm gonna try using the uh, using the knife on both these statement statements. Then. Objection. Hmm. <laughs> I love how like I got 
I love how I'm at, I, I'm pretty much at the end of the trial, and then all caution that I had this whole entire trial, I'm just throwing it out the window, because I'm like, I got it, I know it. Just need to know which one to use it on. Alright. <laughs> maybe I should, maybe I should play a little bit more cautious, right? Um, but I say fuck that, because I worked goddamn hard to get this far, <laughs> and I'm not doing that. Boom. Alright. This is the last one I wanted to try here. The knife on this one. Okay. Alright, no, definitely. Guess I gotta cautious my way through this one, too. I wish I can just be like, oh, look, the pipe and the knife and da da da. Right, you know? See, so what did I press last time? Let's see, plenty of knives around. Yeah, meanwhile. I think I pressed this one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna press this. Hold it! Let's do it the smart way now. Sorry, would you care to elaborate? Nothing to say, really. Rather partial to the spot of the carving, you see, pipes and whatnot, fishing tackles, you know, the sort of thing. It's a passion we both share. I like to carve little wooden trinkets too. And oh, uh, so that's where the knife would have come from. It's like a carving knife. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a jackknife, right? Try to say, oh, uh, anything, um, shit. <clears throat> Try to say we're always losing knives about the place, and we have dozens of other things. They sell them at the market sometimes, 24 at price of 19. Needless to say, I snap them up. Oh! Okay. Some prefers, uh, prefers to use two knives at metal time. At, at metal times. At meal times. <laughs> two instead of a knife and a fork. Now, now, Joan. We don't want people to think that. Oh. Here we go again with the scaldings. Why are they being so evasive? I imagine it's because they don't want to believe it. They can't bear the thought that it might have been one of their knives that injured the victim. Which is entirely understandable, of course, but still. Go on with your testimony. Sir? What, we're not gonna add that to the testimony? Okay, whatever. Press this one too, then. So you have no intention of admitting it was your knife, unless we can produce proof. Yeah? Even though there's no other credible possibility, credible? Yeah, credible possibility if Mr. Not a ho Sorry, let me try that again. Even though there is no other credible possibility if Mr. Natsume is innocent. Objection! Oh my god, I'm tired of you. You forgot, my Nipponese friend. That it has yet to be established that the accused is not responsible for their attack. As if I could forget. If only there was some way to know who had handled the knife. But I suppose wizardry like that is just a dream. Perhaps you're thing uh, perhaps a thing fingerprinting <clears throat> Perhaps you're thinking of fingerprinting, Mr. Nodoto. What? What do you mean? It's not a dream? That sort of wizardry really exists? Whenever people touch anything, they leave behind unique patterns from their skin. Or so they say. But I can't see anything. There are, already there are already countries in this world where these so-called fingerprints can be used as evidence. Lord Strongheart is currently discussing the matters at the Ministry of Justice. Yes, I believe we are rapidly approaching an era of scientific methods of investigation. But for now, we shall have to find an alternative method of appro approving our expectations. That the knife found in the victim's back was, re was originally in Mr. and Mrs. Garadev's house. If only I could transplant this whole incident to the several years in the future. <laughs> oh, damn it. That's the extent of their testimony, is it? What do you think, Mr. Nadahodo? Well, I think they're I think they've heard all this before, to be honest. I can't say I'm partial I can't say I'm particularly confident that we'll be able to prove I can't read anymore. That we'll be able to prove anything new from this testimony. But in this cross examination, it's absolutely essential that we establish how the knife came to be at the scene of the incident. Yes, I know. 
I'm sure both of them must be feeling very worried. Worried that it was, in fact, knife belonging to one of them that caused the victim's injuries. If we could find even a tiny shred of evidence to support that theory, it would clinch, it would clinch this trial for us. It would explain everything. Yes, it would. So far, Soseki-san's sake, uh, so far, what am I saying? So for Soseki-san's sake, we must. We must find the last crucial piece of evidence. I am trying my best here. <laughs> I'm day referring to my wife and I had a bit of a skirmish. Tell me about the skirmish then. Please, please do. The reason is what you told us yesterday, I believe. Yes, that's right. If I remember correctly, it all started because of a note that was tucked into the pages of a book belonging to Mr. Garadib. A, ra a rather passionate, a pat, mm, a rather passionate note, in fact. But Miss Garadib found the note discovering her husband's little secret, and she gave him a mighty number of slaps across the face for it too. What a sordid state of affairs! Hell on earth, Jesus! Even Von Zeiss is like, I don't want to deal with that shit. I say, when a chap says he can't recall such things, it's common decency not to drag it all up. And besides, I mean, when we're in the fucking court of law and I'm like, bring it up, motherfucker, you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't remember. It's like, no, 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 bring it up. <laughs> Especially when a man's life is at stake. And besides, half of it was wide on the mark anyways. A likely story. And these waters run very deep. What transpired next after these multiple blows to the face? Knock the candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. Alright. And the fire also spread to some items or a furniture, did it not? The bookcase, my armchair, anything of mine really. It so happened there was some bath water around some gamer girl bath water just lying around. <laughs> <laughs> that evening, so I sloshed that about to put it out. I went, no, my precious bath water. A most, a most precarious situation you put yourself in. Ours is three, uh, ours is three stories down. Really? That's how we spell in stories now? Jesus. Ours is three-story townhouse on the west side of the street, where the water, where the water's main isn't connected. Have to draw water from public water pumps during the day if you need any. The lodgers are always moaning that they can't get any water at night. Although, that little mustache Japanese man buys water in bottles, I believe. Hmm, the defendant Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, he receives a, receives a step, a stipend? Stipend, stipend, that's the word. She's a stipend for his studies, you know, from his home country. Can you imagine being able to brew a pot of tea at all hours? He's obviously very well off. Obviously not if he's living in your danky ass basement. Basement. Have you actually seen the state of the man? I believe he uses all his income to buy books. Well, anyways, the point is, I was able to douse the fire with water, fortunately enough. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Okay. All right, I, I'm gonna, all right, hold up, I'm just gonna do that again, because I'm pretty sure I pressed every statement. Even though the room was on fire, yes. Well, I didn't let her finish this statement. Because, uh, what you call it, Mac Tonight right there kind of interrupted her, so I didn't let her finish this. You'll need to point out, let me see. Some bread, cabbage, whatever, garlic, towel, and a sponge, a napkin, soft items, and it was really most restrained, the majority of them barely hit John. He is my husband after all. I see, Miss Garadeb. Thoughtfulness and consideration for your spouse is apparent. What about you, Mr. Garadeb? Do you remember what your wife threw at you? Well, I recall the Lion's Pride, of course. Jolly good book. Only just purchased it, too. And a jolly good book for burning, it seems. But it was a dash awful scene on the battlefield, I can tell you. 
Flames everywhere, smoke billowing. Couldn't be, I couldn't see a bally thing. Really? I dare say I wouldn't even have noticed a knife uh, bouncing off, off the old, wow. <clears throat> I dare say I wouldn't even notice a knife bouncing off the old bounce, really? I don't think they tend to bounce, actually. Okay, so that's everything. I, I, uh, I examined everything there. All right. Okay. So he wants me to prove it. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. I mean... I, I, I guess I can... See. Young woman render unconscious. Because this updated too and I didn't even fucking check it out. He remains unconscious. Uh, apart from the single stab on large knife. They still have seen running white report. Okay. On the east side. Okay, they changed it to east side. Great. All right, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Knock candles stick over, set the fire at the carpet. Okay, I pressed every situation here, right? I just have to choose one to throw the evidence towards. Um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't put the knife towards this one, I think, so I'm just gonna do that. Protection. That reveals the damning inconsistency in the last day. Oh, but it doesn't, though. Damning, you say? Hmm. Yeah, there wasn't really nothing to, uh, you know, press on that. Not press, but, you know, present on that. Knock candlestick over, set fire to the carpet, soon had it out, though we got the window open. Dear friend, to my wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish, I recall the, can't recall the reason. Meanwhile, I'll pick up whatever I can find. Plenty of knives around our place, can't say I noticed if one or two went missing, I'm afraid. Okay. I'm actually really confused on this. I feel like this is the statement I have to throw the evidence at. But since I did press everything, maybe I maybe it's one of those situations where I have to double press it after I press everything else already. So let me just do this real quick for this one. Have no intentions meaning it's a knife. Okay. Even though yeah you object me, that's cool. We did this whole song and dance already. I'm trying to see if there's any new uh if only there was some way to know who handled the knife. Yeah, and then they start talking about fingerprinting, but we can't do that yet. Hmm. For now... Hmm. That's the extent of the testimony. What did you think? Well, things... okay. Cross-examination is absolutely essential. Establish how the knife came to be. Yes, I know. I'm sure both of them must be feeling very worried. Huh. I might be overthinking. <laughs> I might be overthinking. I really feel like this is the one. Plenty of knives around our place. Can't say I noticed one or two missing. All right, let me see. Um, apparently it fell on the floor during... Is there any other part of this? Oh, I didn't examine this. It looks to be in sorry state with a bandage wrapped around it, doesn't it? Uh, but for some reason it feels slightly ominous to me, like it's trying to shout out a warning. Probably because it's the same blue as Mr. Gerdeb's dressing gown. I suppose it must be considerably sentimental value to Mr. Garadeb, given giving that he's gone through trouble of repairing it. Either that, or he can't afford to replace it. <laughs> okay. I don't think there's anything- Oh! 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 
All that work I did for nothing. <laughs> Stupid me. You know what? Next time, instead of trying to find the quickest way to solve this, I'm just going to be thorough like I always been. All right. Oh, something just twinkled inside the chamber of this pipe here. Yes, I saw it. Something stuck in there, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. What's this? It's a tiny fragment of metal. It looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade? Surely it couldn't be. Jesus. All that work for nothing. <laughs> oh, wow. Now let's double examine it, because now I gotta be thorough. This tiny piece of metal we found in the chamber of Mr. Gardep's pipe. It looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade. Something wrong, Mr. Narahoda? I don't really know. There's just something niggling me about it. Perhaps in that case, it would be wise to examine some other piece of it. Yeah, don't worry. I, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, right? Gotta be thorough now. Because you can't just use common sense anymore. We're going back to fucking... Uh, fucking, what? Phoenix Wright 2? Where they're like, oh, let's talk about the green gem in the fucking key, even though that's not part of the description of the item. Oh, look here, Mr. Narhodo, it's just the tip. Small piece, uh-huh. Wait, part of it's missing. Be wrong, but I got a feeling, dog. Remember the shit? Eh, that. That tiny fragment of metal we found inside Mr. Gardev's pipe. Yes, and just maybe, just maybe. Oh my, oh my is a perfect fit. Somehow I just knew it. Alrighty. There we go. Wait, but did, did that not... Hold up, did that not update the evidence? Uh, let's see, it's perfect fit. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's a perfect fit. It did update the evidence. It didn't tell me it updated the evidence, but it did update the evidence. Now, I'm actually going to save again, mainly for the fact that... I have two screw-ups, just in case I fuck up and choose the wrong thing. I really don't want to go through the whole song and dance of, um... <laughs> of them going like, Oh, the victim is pro- Not the victim, my bad. The, uh, accused is proven guilty. Oh, that shit. There you go. Jesus. Mr. Garadab. Could I ask you to take a good look at this piece? Hmm. You can ask, but I can't see a- I can't see a bally thing. You can't? You used to call me Dead Eye Deb back in the regiment, of course. But, that was some time ago. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days, I struggle to tell B from D and P from Q, to be honest. Oh, he does. Dearie me. It's rather wearing back as. Wow, I fucked that up. It's rather wearing being asked about every other letter and every other word. You must, you must D very dusty. <laughs> very dizzy, huh? All right, cool. You're an asshole. <laughs> You're an asshole. Ryosuke for that. Ryosuke, whatever the fuck your name is. What is this, a tiny scrap of metal? Yes, almost certainly from the tip of a blade. And what may appear to be... Um, oh, fuck, I can't even... Um, I lost all ability to read. I've been doing this for, what, five hours? And what may appear at first to be just a tiny scrap is in fact a crucial piece of evidence. Now instead of me just blurting it out, time for us to do this whole fucking song and dance. Interesting. Where did the defense come by this evidence? It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Garadab's pipe. My pipe, you say? By Jove. I wonder how that got there. And what precisely does this fragment of metal sig signify, Council? Are you suggesting that this is some way related to the matter of stabbing on Briar Road? Yes, I am. Like I have been for half this fucking trial. <laughs> I am. What? When put together with another piece of evidence already in the court's record, I believe the tiny fragments of metal will un will unravel the true the whole truth of this case. Unravel is the name of that opening from Tokyo Ghoul that everybody likes so goddamn much. <laughs> That's right, I went there. You didn't expect to hear a Tokyo Ghoul reference today now, did you? Hmm. You appear rather confident in that extraordinary statement, Council. 
I do. Very well. Present the pr present the pertained evidence to the court. What evidence? Yeah, yeah, you know, you get it. It's the fucking knife, guys. Come on. I'm tired of being the one with common sense in this goddamn room. This is the knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there is a small piece at the tip of the blade that is missing. A common issue with the inferior blades sold at unsavory street markets. Criminals who use them regularly leave the tips lodged in their victim's bones. And what of this particular knife? No doubt its tip has suffered a similar fate, now, now lang languishing. That's a word you chose to use today. Now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. Objection. No, that's not the case. Huh? The tip of this particular knife blade is the very fragment fragment. Is very fragment of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Gerdet's pipe. <laughs> what the fuck was that? What was that pose he took for a moment? He's went, ugh! You wound me. I did. Look at him. Oh my god. Look at this Alucard motherfucker. I swear. I don't believe it. The knife from the crime scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match. How dare you. Good golly gosh. That man's, <laughs> man's whole clothes is burnt up. Jesus. Order. Is this some sort of eastern sorcery? Really, guys? You have to you have to call me out on me in Japanese like that? This is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. A miracle. So Von Zykes has figured it out, has he? Counsel, explain this extraordinary coincidence at once. Yes, my lord. The crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of the metal find its way inside Mr. Gerdav's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent witness testimony. I had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it not to clean out with one of her soft projectiles. She did, uh, she did, yes? It would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Oh, oh dearie me. During the argument between these two that occurred, just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mr. Gerdev flung- oh my bad. Mrs. Gerdev flung the knife at her husband. However, the knife missed Mr. Gerdev instead striking the pipe in his hand at the time, which caused this tip to break off, of course. Good lord! Yes, and that's when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garadep's pipe. The chances of that are a million to one. And yet there's no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted off the pipe and flew out of the open window. Uh. In short, this knife which fell from the window of the Garadep's house is the very same night that struck the victim in the middle of her back on the street below. Oh gosh. Oh dear. It's almost like I've been saying it for half the fucking trial! Oh my god, what are you fucking objecting to? Can you stop? <laughs> Can you stop, please? Please? The trial's gone on for far too long. It's been five hours, dickhead. This whole fucking stream has been this one damn trial that I already saw fucking two hours ago. <laughs> A full body theory, I'll give you that. Complex ba- uh, fuck. A complex bouquet of, seeming, of seemingly trivial points, possibly arranged to create an almost passable vintage. Allow me to toast my learned friend's character- uh, fuck. Characteristic that's a that's a big word, man. That too many syllables. Go fuck yourself. Uh, approaching to the bottom of his argument. Sorry. But after all, it's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. The bottle, I fear, is corked. Because you see. 
it's spoiled by the immeasurable inconsistencies. An immeasurable- what? Lord Von Zykes, explain yourself. What is the inconsistency you claim to have identified? An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. What? What is it now? They did th the victim was found with a knife planted in the middle of her back. Yeah? Yes, in her. Oh. Motherfucker, you're not gonna sit here and be like, Oh, I would've landed directly on her head. I already explained this shit. I'm tired of you. Really? Why'd you have to hit him? <laughs> That's right, you silly little man. Now, John, old thing, what are you getting so excited about? Why the fuck did you hit me? <laughs> Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. If the knife that struck- Why the fuck is there a loud ass plane over my house? Dickhead? <laughs> If the knife that struck her had fallen from above, there's no possible way it could have planted itself into the victim's back. I already explained this shit. Order, order. Quite right, you see. That's exactly right. If the knife had fallen on her from above, it would have struck her on top of her head. Unless... She saw the book and looked at it, bent over to pick it up, and then for bam, the knife, and you know. He's lost for words, look. I knew it. I never liked his theory in the first place. I don't know though, what really did happen? Yeah, okay. Hmm, it would appear the defense has made rather a spectacular blunder. If a theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. Your theory, my learned friend, is history. Time to go to my dark place. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> we were so close. I could see the truth. I was so sure we were on the right track. But now, the way has been blocked completely just by one simple inconsistency. Or in other words, we simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency. The theory will stand. Mr. Sada! You mustn't worry, Mr. Narahuda. You were just caught off guard, that's all, and your mind went blank. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. The key to this is the court record. I'm sure all the information you need is there. It seems you have nothing to say, my Nipponese friend. I'm just gonna... Just in case you guys decide to fuck me over royally again? There should be a button for a fucking quick save. I'm just saying. Make my life easy. It seems you have nothing to say, my Nipponese friend. Well, your silence speaks volumes. A tactic... A what? A tap. I... That's not even the word. Uh, a tatic, tat, 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 whatever the fuck. A tatic acceptance that your theory is flatly flawed. Fatally, my bad. Not flatly. Why'd I say it like that? Fatally flawed. This inconsistency doesn't mean I was on the wrong track. It means that I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test. Yes. If the knife fell on the victim from above, there's no way that it could have hit her in the middle of her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. What are you implying? Counsel. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. That can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. We already have that answer. Goodness. Utter. Utter madness. Surely this must be the last time. I don't know, Judge. Is it? Because you guys are contempt on fucking me over at every turn. 
Council, present the evidence in which you speak. This is the last inconsistency, the final piece of the puzzle. If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. The evidence that explains how the f how the falling knife became lodged in the victim's back is it the fucking thing I've been saying the whole entire goddamn time? Take that! Of course it is. This, the fourth book found at the scene. This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. The, the burnt book. Is that not Mr. Garadeb's book? Yes. And to understand its significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene in the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question and the victim holding it in her hand. But as we all know now, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers like that. Quite so. As part of his wholesale transplanting of the crime scene to the opposite side of the road. That's true, however. As part of his testimony, Constable B made an extremely enlightened, enlightened statement at, at that point. But, what made you place the book in the victim's hand? Oh, well sir, that's because, that's how I found it. When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. In other words, the victim had already placed the book up on her own volition. Placed the book, what am I saying? Picked up the book. And clearly, that must have been before she suffered the knife wound. Well, I should say so. After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she had been doing much of anything. So, the question becomes, why did the victim have the book in her hand? By, by Jingo! I think I'm beginning to see what, what may have happened now. Oh, dearie me. We know the book fell from the top floor of the Garadep household onto the pavement below. At precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. Yes, at exactly that moment. The young woman was walking around the street in the light fog. When all of a sudden, the book fell right in front of her. The book I threw. Yes, Miss Garadet. And what do you think the woman did? What would you do if you were walking along, walking along, and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? W well, I, I really can't imagine it, but I suppose she might have reached down and picked the book up. Yes, that's exactly what the woman in fact did. She picked up the book. Oh. Oh, heavens! And when the woman reached down to pick the fallen book up, what position would her back have been in? That's right. Facing the sky, completely and utterly defenseless. Then, in that very next moment, while the woman was sent bent over picking up the book. The next object fell from the room above, the jackknife, straight into the middle of her back. And at that same time, walking by chance directly behind Miss Green, was the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Well, I never. It appeared to Mr. Natsume that the woman simply collapsed on the floor in the dark and the fog. And he didn't, damn it, I fucked that up. <laughs> in the dark and the fog, what the, f in the dark and the fog, who says it like that? Whatever, in the dark and the fog, he didn't see the knife falling, from, <laughs> falling on her from above. Oh. And from the other direction, the constable and his wife saw no one but the victim and her apparent attacker. So there was never really a culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No, that was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that, cul that culminated to an unfortunate accident. And 
that is the real truth behind this case. Well, <laughs> thanks for the follow dance, Jesus. It's almost like I've been, it's almost like I cracked this case halfway into the fucking, whatever, stay calm. It's not like I wasted two hours explaining something I already knew. <laughs> well, Mr. and Mrs. Gerdet. The very first time you show me that knife, I had my suspicions. I wonder if perhaps it might have been something like that. There, there, old bean. Poor Mrs. Gerdet. Of course, I never meant for anything of the sort to happen, but it was all my fault, wasn't it? I take full responsibility. I let my anger get the better of me. I threw that book. And I threw the knife as well. John, dear, it's all right, I know. I'm, I'm ever so sorry. Truly, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. On his bad leg, too? Somebody help him, please. Ah, oh, Damn it. This was way more entertaining than the first fucking trial that they- Well, not the first, my bad, I'm sorry. The first trial was actually really fucking okay. But, um, then whatever the fuck Mick Gilded's trial was, that shit was kind of boring, I'm not gonna lie. Lord Von Zykes? What news, uh, what news of Mrs. Gerdet? She's been taken to the infirmary. It would seem that today's event has left her in an especially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There is no cause for concern. Yes. I bestowed... <laughs> I bestowed... Fuck, I can't even read no more. I be, I un... I... Damn it! <laughs> I unbeknownst... I unbeknownst to themselves. <laughs> they caused what could easily have been a terrible tragedy. They shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. There's some good news, however, my lord. I've just heard word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition is improving steadily, and the doctor believes she will regain consciousness soon. It's strange. I've been talking about the victim all this time, but never once met her. How wonderful! The woman is out of danger, it seems. Yes, that is good news. So, Mr. Soseki Natsume, who was here the whole entire time, but no one ever spoke to him? Uh, yes? On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our great British culture and have been repaid with immeasurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. I kicked your ass, Von Zykes! No. It is me who should be begging your pardon. Oh no, Mr. Natsume. That evening, when the young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes, I jumped to the wrong conclusion again. My confusion. What conclusion, sir? I was sure that the woman was dead. Yes. Constable Beat said the same thing, didn't he? He thought he had been killed. Uh, he thought she had been killed too. I suppose it must have looked completely. Li uh, damn it! I can't even fucking. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. <laughs> This 
It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I still can't get used to the life here. I can't relax. I'm sure there are evil spirits lurking in the fog. Like they're haunting me. Poor Soseki-san. His imagination really has gone, gotten the better of him. Yes, poor man. So, when it happened, I thought the young woman had been taken by the fog spirits. I should never have dropped my books like that and ran away. I should have called for help, for a doctor, for the police! Instead, I managed to create a rift in the relationship trust be wait what? In the relationship of trust between our two empires. Trust my ass! I've been met with nothing but racism the moment I stepped foot in Great Britain. Everyone's all like, Ugh, the filthy Japanese! And I'm like, what the fuck? And for that, I am truly sorry. Wait, why? Why is it? <laughs> I, ow, fuck, I just hit. I just fucking hit the bottom of my goddamn desk. Um, I got confused for a moment because I was looking at the jury and fucking Mr. Moon is up there. One could indeed say that some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. On that, cre uh, one that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were we were befooled by the spirit and led to false conclusions. Yes, I believe the spirit is called racism. But thanks to Lord Von Zykes and our young lawyer here, thanks to what? Who? I'm sorry. That chain has now been okay. You know what? I'll give him a little a little piece of the a little piece of the uh, credit because he did let me fucking uh, do testimony on on Garadab or whatever the hell. But that motherfucker's been stepping me every goddamn step of the way. All right, the chain has now been broken and the spirit exercised. I heart I heartily commend you both. Oh. Kicked your ass, Von Zykes. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord. In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decision regarding the defendant's culpability. Culpability. However the fuck you say that word. Are you ready to present your findings to the court? As the foreman of the jury, I sure... I can, Fuck. As foreman of the jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion. I do declare, though, <laughs> my finger slipped on the button, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't expect the woman next to me, that's for sure. Sitting in the old beans, uh, sit, fuck, sitting for the old bean while she's out of action, you know, but I know that her decision, I know what her decision would be. I can't even fucking read anymore, I'm done with this shit. Does this mean I'm finally being able to get out of here and start work? Yeah, dog, you're five hours late to your job, you got three hour shift. Go ahead. I say, I have a cork. I have a corker of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. I hereby demand your final decision. Mr. Foreman. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. We didn't start the fire. It was Smokey Bear because he plays with matches. Very well, Mr. Soseki Natsume. I hereby pronounce you. Not guilty. I kicked your ass, Bonzikes. Now, here's the problem, though. Apparently, everyone who's in a fucking whatever with Bonzikes, whatever the hell, in a goddamn trial with him. They end up dying, right? Whoever the fucking uh, defendant is at the moment. So, let's all cross our fingers and hope that Natsume doesn't fucking die for no goddamn reason. That would be really fucked up because he didn't do anything wrong. And finally, Mr. Natsume. Oh, yes, Lord, sir. You are now a free man once more. It is my hope that you will continue to further your education in Great Britain. And also, I will see you on Christmas, because I am also Santa Claus. <laughs> May you never again be brought before me. Oh, 
Yes, sir. Of course. All my life, I swear I'll never set foot in the courtroom again. Transported to tears! Thank you, counsels. Court is adjourned. Ah, uh, I am... I need a fucking break. <laughs> 20th of February, 3.17 p.m., the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Oh, locum. Wait, you mean me? Of course! Is there any other locum here? Is there... is there even one? Compared to the original locum student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire, your name has become rather short, hasn't it? Yeah, Cesaro! Stop calling me by my fucking last name! We've been through like, what, three problems already? Four problems? Just call me Rinosuke, it's easier to say, damn it. What's wrong with us using my actual name? Oh, at last, I'm free! I am free! Joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilations! Hey, wait, heady, hearty, happiness, hurrah! Oh, I am pleased. Mr. Natsume is delighted. Would it be so hard just to say that then? Locum, you did it! You saved me from the pre- <laughs> He looks like he's ready to do the fucking hump day, like, gif, you know what I mean? Well, what happened to the poor woman who was in no way, uh, who was in no way your fault after all- Wait, what? Oh yeah, yeah, what happened to the poor woman who was in no way your fault after all? I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, 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 that's not it. Lovely, loyal, locum lawyer! Um, yeah? I mean, as I said before, I have just never got used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners. I see towering brick buildings. And from high up windows, I see them looking down at me, laughing. Look at the little hunchback. Oh dear. I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. But today, you locum lawyer gave me gave me gloom the boot. Wait, what? I can't even read. Gave my gloom the boot. You stood firmly behind the the bar the bar mm, the bar bar bar. I can't fucking. I want to shoot myself. <laughs> you stand firmly behind me before all those uh, babbling British. You battle to the bitter end. Laying bare the bailiff truth, the the ba bailiff. What am I saying? The baffling truth. And when I, and when I beheld the blinding fireworks amongst the beams of the Bailey's roof, I, I, I bellowed. Behold, the best barrister ever born. Well, it's very flattering, and we're very pleased for you. This has given me a wonderful and adult. That's the word. Now I can say it. Now now that I've seen it enough, I can say the word. <laughs> this has given me a wonderful anecdote to re-encounter my old friends back in Japan. An anecdote? Is that what... Is that what... the oh, fuck. Is that what's to become of all of my hard work? Oh, there you are, my dear friends. Get the fuck away from me. I apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. Oh, Mr. Shlomes. What a pleasure to meet you. I see, I'm here not a moment too soon. A disaster has been averted. <laughs> I'm glad to say. Oh. The trial shall begin pre the trial shall begin presently, Miss Narhoro, and I wish you the very best of luck. It, sh it just finished. W what? No. Then my haste was in vain. It's it's you. Herlock Schlums. Oh, have we met, sir? Um, this is Mr. Natsume, the man you had arrested, Mr. Shlomes. Oh, I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom, either of your bleak lodgings or the prison cell. I simply cannot place the curious face in the light. Charming. This is all your fault, Herlock Shlomes. You are the reason I had to go through this terrible ordeal. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. 
My apologies, sir, but I assure you, I have placed, uh, I have placed you now. You're the fellow who abandoned the poor young lady and ran off, are you not? Had she have been taken to a hospital more urgently? I feel perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh. But it was unavoidable, I'm sure. Wow. I completely fucked that word up. It was unavoidable, I'm sure. We are but human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't put the blame on me. <laughs> we are but human after all. Anyone who have been shaken by such an experience. I do feel very badly about how I behaved. Well, never mind. Now then, was it that you wanted to say to me, sir? Nothing. <laughs> Priceless. Oh, I'm sorry, really, but... That was quite priceless. Poor Soseki-san. Still, on the bright side, you have an extremely entertaining experience without paying a penny. And, it would seem, you were not even found guilty. But, there's no bright side. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Natsume? Even after this, I'm... I'm still cursed. By the spirits, and and now by the Reaper. Oh, Lord Von Zykes. I haven't forgotten, you know, what facing that man in court means. Even if you're found not guilty, you're still doomed. It it will be all right, Mr. Natsume. Hmm? If the Reaper appears trying to make trouble, I will protect you. Yeah, what the fuck? Why me? With the perfect execution, <laughs> perfect executed Cesaro takedown. Much as I like being turned on my head, a bit of warning might have been nice, Miss Cesaro. So, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about recounting your experiences to your friends back in Japan. Yes, I intend to return to the homeland as soon as possible. Oh. It had already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. I visit universities, libraries, bookshops. I've been honored with the tutelage of professors. Tutelage is a fun word to say. See, I say it, tutelage, and now you guys at home watching it want to say it too. Go ahead, do it. I won't judge you. Go ahead, say it. Tutelage. It's fun. I learned so much from the wealth of literature here, and the city it has shaped. And I have come to realize that this is my calling to sail home and tell my, my fellow countrymen about it. That's very touching, Mr. Natsume. Or, in perhaps less veiled terms, you wish to withdraw halfway around the world, escaping the terror of the Reaper's Curse. Th that's not it at all! The more I learn of literature, the more this strange feeling claws at my insides. I feel compelled to return to my roots, and attempt to pin my work on my own. Oh, I see. Work of Literature by Soseki-san. Could be interesting read. And what about Mr. Sato, and yourself, Mr. Naruhoro? Uh, sorry, what about us? Will you return to Japan alongside your mustache compatriot? Why would we? A week has not yet passed since we arrived in London. And only now does it feel as though we have finally we have finally found our feet. And you are and you are accommodated in a hotel at present, are you not? That's right. But we need to find lodgings before it bankrupts us. I've calculated uh, I've calculated we can only afford another 10 nights before our entire budget is exhausted. Well then, you can take my logic. I don't fucking want that. Oh, uh, the, the windowless room? Uh, but what it lacks are windows. 
it more than makes up for with the floor and ceiling and walls. Gray. And of course, I'd be happy to leave behind the accursed evil spirits. Oh my, an evil spirit. So he goes, oh, instead of me having a curse, you can have a curse. You should take my curse. You want my curse? Here you go. Oh yes. It tries to suffocate you while you sleep. It's... Are you talking about the fucking cat we found in your room? <laughs> it's a in, it's a infallible wake-up call. Well, we'll think about it, if that's all right. Perhaps I can offer a more welcome alternative. Would you consider taking lodgings with me? Oh, great! I get to hang out with slums. Yeah. The guy who handcuffed me not once but twice. Really? Well, a vacancy has conveniently presented itself. Though it is up to the attic. Oh, wait, what? Oh, it is up in the attic. I might add. Are you sure it's just? Are you sure it isn't just a storage loft? I spoke with the landlady this very morning on the matter of price, and Iris is cleaning the room as we speak. You must come at once. I presume you have no luggage to speak of. Oh, this is simply wonderful. What an honor to be invited to take lodges in the great detective's office, attic. I'm, I'm too overcome for words. So, suggesting we look elsewhere is out of, is out of, then? You can't do that? Then it's settled. Iris will prepare a welcome dinner. We just fucking, we just, we just made a co-ed fucking, <laughs> Jesus. Alright, fine, fuck it, we'll live with slums. You must come too, Mr. Natsume. I insist. Oh no, he's taking his ass home. I, I, I don't know what to say. But thank you. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Wait, where the hell is he going to sleep? He's not sleeping in the attic with us, right? Wonderful. Then I'll go and complete the paperwork for the formal release. What the hell? You okay over there? My dog started coughing. <laughs> um, the paperwork for a formal release, Mr. Natsume. It shan't take long. Shant, shant, whatever. Somebody's happy. Locum. I knew that you wouldn't let me down. I'm truly delighted to have met you here in London. Likewise, Mr. Natsume. It's been a privilege meeting you too. It's a shame that we're gonna have to say goodbye so soon. Well, I've come to realize that I belong in Japan. But Locum, we'll meet again one day. Yes, I'm sure. And hopefully by then, I'll be a successful lawyer. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful author. Well, my dear fellow, our carriage appears to have arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Narohodo? Yes, Mr. Sloans. Have little doubt Mr. Natsume will be released in time for dinner this evening. And so, with Soseki-san's in- God damn it. With Soseki-san's innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. Sloams into the sunset. <laughs> we rode with Mr. Sloams to what was to become our new home, 221B Baker Street. Oh my god, that whole trial took almost six hours. Oh my god, in the fucking chapter! This isn't a bad attic, though. So this... is to be our new office, yes. Our office? I really like the sound of that. Me too. It's simply wonderful, isn't it? I hope you can see this, Kazuma. It's only a small step. But I like to think we're getting a little closer to your dream now. So, my dear fellows, do you like the place? Oh my fucking god! What the hell are you wearing? <laughs> what? I didn't expect that. Okay, alright. Chad Willington is amused. Hmm, Mr. Slums, yes, thank you. 
It's a delightful room, Mr. Sloan's. I simply adore it. Good. I'm pleased to hear it. Iris and I are delighted to welcome you. I hope everyone's hungry. It's nearly time for dinner. We'll eat as soon as Mr. Knott's May arrives. We have a lot to celebrate. Iris, you must let me help you. All right then, Susie. You can be in charge of the salad. You know, Suzato, since you like tossing things a lot, why don't you toss this salad? That's right, I went there. <laughs> Splendid. So, Mr. Nahoto, how does it feel when I caress your nipples like so? Do you have your own, uh, to have your own office in the capital? It's very exciting, actually. I can't help but wonder what adventures awaits us. <laughs> Those were precisely my sentiments when I first established my office at these premises. Until I discovered the dark truth of the city of London, that is. Uh, I'm sorry, what? London is a glorious place, full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and merit. Merit? 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 Mm, I don't know how to pronounce that. Merit. I think that's how you say it. But... The brightest of lights cast the darkest of shadows. Shadows? What do you mean? Well, I believe you are well aware of the murkiness that lies beyond London's facade already. So, once again, Mr. Narahoro. Welcome to London. In the chapter, 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 in the chapter. Of course, oh my god. Of course, at the time, I had no idea of the significance of those words Mr. Shlomes so casually spoke. But it wasn't long before my turn came. To lift the facade and see the truth, uh, see the true death of the murk that laid behind it. Yeah! Chapter in! Fuck! Jesus! Fucking almost six hours for a trial? What the fuck? Whatever, man. Oh! <laughs> oh, fuck, wait. Question- That was the fourth episode, right? Oh... And, okay, we're on the last episode now. Jesus. Huh. What fucking time is it? Where's my phone? I don't even need my phone. I'm right in front of my computer. What am I doing? Okay, great. All right, so I did end around the time that I wanted to. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so, that's going to be it for this stream. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> but, do you not fret, because... As I said earlier this week, I was supposed to actually stream yesterday, but I didn't. Was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. It was yesterday and the night before. I was supposed to stream, but I didn't because I was like really tired. And now that I have gotten a lot of sleep, what I plan on doing right now is making good on my promise that I said that I had a lot of time to stream this week. And probably in like, uh, what time is it again? Shit. In like an hour or two. I'm going to walk my ass all the way back to this fucking computer and we're going to start episode 5, right? Get this shit out the way. And pretty much stream, um, pretty much stream until, I don't know, probably like 4 hours or something, right? Make a nice dent into the chapter. So that's what I plan on doing. I, I honestly didn't expect this chapter to be as long as it is. But, so, later today, if you're on the East Coast or whatever, probably around 10.30, um, well, if you're on the East Coast of the United States, obviously. Um, you know, EST, uh, like 1030, right? I'm going to come back here and we're going to start chapter five. Um, and whatever the hell that time conversion is for other places, you know, you know, already, right. That's what I plan on doing. Cause I kind of, I want to, I want to make a good, I want to make good progress in this game. Right. Um, but until then, uh, I guess if you want, well, first of all, for those who came and watched live, thank you. It means a lot to me. Right. It'll be nice, uh, it's nice to fucking talk to people during this bullshit, <laughs> right? 
And, uh, you know, if you like what you saw, you've been lurking, but thanks for the stream. Oh, don't worry. Totally, dude. You don't have to, like, you know, if you want to lurk, you can lurk. I don't care. It's all going to get uploaded on fucking YouTube anyways, right? So I kind of treat it like that, right? But, yeah, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, if you want to follow me, you can do that, right? If you want to, if you want to make me, what's the word I'm looking for? If you want to, if you want to make me able to be, uh, I can't speak. If you want to make it able for me to stream more, that's how I go. That's how you do it. Put those words together. Um, you can, you know, you can sub to me if you want. If you have a, uh, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you have a free Twitch sub that you can throw to anybody that you feel like. So if you want to throw out my way, go ahead to it. You know, it's whatever. If you don't, that's fine, right? Um, if you ever want to see this again, right, it's going to be uploaded at a later date on YouTube along with a bunch of other playthroughs I got going on YouTube, right? Um, right now I'm uploading the, uh, the VODs for Persona 4, the stream we did, um, recently that, and we recently also finished, um, Kingdom Hearts 1, right, on Proud Mode, right, you know, with all the secret bosses and bullshit, so I'm going to be uploading that VODs to the YouTube, which is on the screen. And of course, on YouTube, there's the vampire, um, the vampire Let's Play going on right now, along with the Pokemon Marathon that I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the thumbnail to be done so I can move on to the other stuff, right? Um, so there's that, right? If you watch it on YouTube, please leave a like, leave a comment. It helps out a lot. It helps out more than you know. And then um, on Twitter, my Twitter's on the screen. If you want to follow me there, you can go ahead and do that. I appreciate it. For the most part on Twitter, um, I just throw out updates when I'm going to stream, right? Because my schedule isn't set in stone for the most part. Um, and then, you know, I just put random stuff on Twitter. And if you ever want to send fan art or some bullshit, you can at me on Twitter with that, right? And then I'll throw it at the beginning of the stream with, like, all the artwork and stuff. So that's pretty much it for me. I don't think there's anything else I need to say at the moment. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so, right? So... <clears throat> As always, I want to say thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, but in within this case, probably like two hours from now. So, <laughs> as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. I'm a chef, chef too.